Okay, I'm going to try to make this video quick because I don't have a lot of time before I go to work. I mean, it's like I have like a couple hours, two or three hours, and to most people that would seem like a lot, but when you get sucked into the black hole of the internet, whether it's watching YouTube videos or, in my case, booktube videos, or if you get tripped in playing stupid little games on Facebook Messenger or like, whatever, you tend, it tends to feel like you don't have as much time. I really need, that's one thing I always struggle with, is, um, managing my time. I mean, I'm hoping, I've been still am holding up for that. Eventually, I will get a handle on that. Especially, you know, knowing that I have to be at work, or uh, leave the house at a certain time. For work, whether it's work or the classes I'm gonna take at the at the um, college, but um and by the way I apologize I have a bit of a cold from um I don't know if it's from my dad or from my sister and her her kids her boys or not because we just visited there but my dad was also sick too so I don't know who to blame there's but no I don't blame him. I mean it happens unfortunately and as I have told Terry. Having a cold is nothing compared to that monthly visit from Aunt Rose that all girls go through. But anyway, I thought I would update you guys on what is going on with my reading. So I did, as usual, I brought more than enough books with me when we went to visit my sister this past weekend. And as usual, I only got through, I would only read a little bit of each one. Because my problem is I can't decide which books I want to bring. And then there are all the books that I feel like I have, that I know I've neglected. And I feel like I want to bring them. But then I end up realizing, well, I can put this book bag and not bring it with me. And it's only a week. It's only a few days. So I can always come back to it. But then they're still sitting there calling me, calling my name. Jackie, read me, read me, finish me. <laughs> like some of those books being, um, like, Crooked Kingdom, I still need to finish that one. Um, I want to get Crazy Rich Asians done before we go to, back to, the, um, go, go back up north to visit, you know, because my, um, sister's, sister-in-law, her wedding is coming up towards the end, in the middle, either in the middle of October or towards the end of October. And we're going to that. So, once again, I will have to ask, I have asked off from work, and I'm going to miss a class. And then that leaves only one more absence I can take. So hopefully there won't be any other major, like, family. I mean, there might be around Christmas time unless we stay here for Christmas. And just have everybody come up here. Which it will be really convenient. But anyway, um. Where was I? Okay, so first I'm going to, um. As you know, I am participating in Victober, and I'm doing the traditional creepy Halloween whimsical type reads as well. And I did get a few of those from the library, or at least two whimsical reads. One of them being *The Graveyard Book* by Neil Gaiman. I am starting to get into this, into finally starting to get into Neil Gaiman's books. I've read last month. I read *Ocean at the End of the Lane*, and this month I am reading, like I said, *The Graveyard Book*. Um, now. The problem is, even though this doesn't have as many chapters, it like only has eight chapters, but they are very long chapters, and I don't like that. But so far, it's really good. It's, as everyone knows, it's, or most people know, I should say everyone, because I'm sure there are people that haven't read the book, and I don't want to sound all, like, assuming and think, oh, of course you, everyone's read this book, which is not, I doubt is the case. But it is about this little boy who, after his parents were murdered, he is discovered by the residents of the old graveyard on his family's estate grounds. And he is taken in by the resident go the resident's ghost and raised by them. He has um and he gets into all these adventures. He you know, he runs into goblins, he um he learns about the world around him, he um and currently he has encountered witch who might not really be a witch actually I think she is a witch um 
and he makes friends, and it's just a cute little whimsical little tale. It's not scary. I mean, it might be a little scary for little kids. It might be a little creepy, but as an adult, I, it's not that scary. And maybe I'm underestimating kids. Maybe this won't be isn't really that scary even to a kid, a little kid. Um, I have put on my list of books for Daniel and Harrison, my nephews, that I want to read. I want to read this to them one day. I want to I want to buy it for them and put it in their collection of books. It's it's such a cute it's such a cute little tale, um, and it's very easy to read. It's just the chapters are really long, so if you don't like long chapters, be prepared. These chapters are a bit long, but there aren't as many. Like I said, there's only eight chapters. I'm slowly but suddenly getting to the halfway point, and I want to be able to get this done so a few days before October 9th, because that's when these are due back. And I like to return at least a couple of the books to the library. Be able to return a couple of books to the library so I won't have to carry so many back. Um, see, that's one of the reasons why I like to make sure I get a book done within the two weeks in time frame. Because if I get a lot of books, I don't want to have to have a lot of books to check out. And I have to walk to the library. I don't... I unfortunately can't um, drive... I am capable of dri driving, despite how I'm way past driving age. Um, my I have physical disabilities that make me incapable, so I have to walk to the library. I can't just drive up there, and I don't have a bicycle or anything. So, and so I don't want to have to carry too many books on the way back. I mean, my parents could probably drop me off there if they wanted me, but anyway. I definitely recommend this book for kids. I'm, as, of course, I'm not done with it yet, but I think I can safely say that I would recommend it for parents to read to their little kids around Halloween time. And the other library books, the other two library books I'm focusing on right now are The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I figure um, this would be a perfect book to read for around October time. This is about this witch who, or, well, first, it's about this village who will sacrifice their children to this witch in the middle that is in hiding in the woods. They will leave um, their children there to get, there's, they believe that the witch will devour them or kill them or whatever. And then, but it turns out the witch doesn't even, doesn't, doesn't even harm them at all. She will actually take the children in and feed them starlight and pass them on to the next village or town as children for them to take and to raise. But she accidentally feeds one of the little babies that is delivered down onto her doorstep moonlight, which will result in powerful magic creating potentially, I think, a witch in a, in a good way. I, I don't know. Um, sorry, I'm, t I'm tired, so I'm not thinking clearly. And so far, it's a really, it's cute. I haven't gotten any very far, obviously. The, I mean, the, with a book like this, I probably could get, I could finish it within a few days. But I have so many other books I'm kind of in the middle of, as you know. And, and that I really want to read, so I haven't. I don't know what, I have this ache in my side. Like, it's hurting, I don't. Maybe I bumped into something, or like maybe I'm bumping into the cart one too many times. I don't know. But so far, it's really cute. I can't really say much. I'm sure I'm going to love it once I get farther into it. But it's really fun. It's whimsical. I like the witch and her companions. The little, um, and right now, the girl's just the baby, so we haven't really spent much time with her. She's just... Just a, so she doesn't have a personality much yet, but she is really cute, and you know, and if she wasn't, a, and wasn't a she, I would probably picture be picturing Daniel, my nephew. He's the youngest. I'd be picturing him in the little baby bud. This is girl, and he's a boy, so it wouldn't make any sense. Now this is the one that I progressed the most in. On the library books. I have two more books, well three more technically, but one of them I think I'm just gonna take back because it's one of those really long books that I didn't realize. I didn't think about the length of the book and I don't, and as I've said in past videos, I don't like, I want to be able to return books, you know, 
after the two week period that I'm allowed, that I can have them. And again, I am aware that you can just recheck them out, but I don't like that feeling of pressure hanging over me that I have to finish this book within a certain amount of time, even if I can't just recheck checking it out. I mean, and I really don't, and I don't necessarily have the problem of someone else will want to check it out soon. I don't, I mean, I might have that problem. There's, it's a very slim chance that I would with the books that I like to read. But I still, I don't like that hanging over me. Even if, you know, even if I know, I can take it back. It just, it bothers me. I want to be able to, like, if it's a really long book, I want to be able to take a really long break before I come back to it. With library books, yes, again, you can keep rechecking them out, but you can't, you have to read it within that time frame. You have to read it eventually. You can't just wait a whole year before you read it again. But anyway, so I am, I finally jumped on the bandwagon of Evelyn Hugo. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is, and in case you're one of those people who hasn't read this in our late party, this is basically about this woman, Monique, who, she gets the opportunity to interview this famous actress from the 50s and 60s. Um, who, like, she's the highest, she was the highest paid actress back in her day, she was just, like, she, and she was notoriously scandalous, was notoriously known for her scandals, especially the seven husbands she's had, um, and all the, like, and it's, so, Monica meets this woman having no idea why she wants her to, to, why she wants her to be the one to interview her. Because, um, because Monique is actually a very new reporter. She's not, you know, she's not known in the journalism community. And then she finds out from Evelyn Hugo when she meets her that Evelyn doesn't want to do an, do an interview for a newspaper article. She actually wants to write, have her finally get, have someone write her book, ghost write her book about her life and all her secrets and her experiences in Hollywood and why she had so many scandal and such a scandalous career and why she married so ma why she had so many husbands. So it's based so it's basically about Monique hearing this woman's life story. So we have two plots. We have Monique's story, but then we also have Evelyn Hugo's story. Of course, Evelyn Hugo's story takes precedence of the story in this in the plot of the story. This was such a good, a good, fascinating read. It's, I'm not done with it yet, but it's such, it's so fun, and you really, it's like you're really seeing Hollywood. And as other booktubers I've mentioned, it does, you do get the feeling of, you wish that you wonder if these movies are real, and you want to know more about this actress, even if she's fictional, you would love to meet her, and... I was actually, I was also thinking if they made this into a movie, who would play her? But my knowledge of Hollywood, which is mostly a bunch of white women, so, or British women. But I don't know a lot of Cuban actresses or actresses that are at least Hispanic. The only one, the first one I could think of was um, America Ferreira for the part of Evelyn Hugo. And I feel really bad, because I couldn't think of anyone, you know, and... I think I would have to search the internet and look at all the movies I watched. But it's kind of Hollywood's fault for that because I think in a way people aren't, I definitely, people aren't wrong when they say that Hollywood is whitewashed. But anyway, it's, it's such a good compelling story and you can really, and you know this is closest to Hollywood as you're going to get because unless you decide to become be part of the business because you really you see the how Hollywood is not as glamorous as it seems. Yes, the people make love do this amazing these amazing jobs and they make tons and tons of money, so it's hard for people to feel bad for them. But and yeah, they'll get lots of the they get, you know and they have meet a lot of great people and they have a lot of people worshiping them and they have you know they get. You know, they get a lot of intimate relationships and all these toys and all this stuff, toys and cars and all that kind of stuff. 
So it's hard for the reg us people that aren't in the business of Hollywood, aren't actors and actresses and singers and other performers. It's hard for us to feel bad for them. But I kind of do. Like, yes, they have all those wonderful things. But and yeah, I'm sure you know. But it's not easy living in the world, living in this world. And there are things you have to do. You have to practically sell yourself just to and destroy yourself just to succeed. That's what I'm kind of learning from when I'm giving, when the impression I'm getting of this woman is doing whatever she has to so to survive in the business and to not be stuck back, go back where she was, which was Hell's Kitchen in New York. And I definitely, it is really, it's a really good book. And I, and I definitely recommend you checking out if you haven't jumped on that bandwagon yet. Okay, that, those are all the li- well, um, yeah, those are all the library books I'm currently reading. I also have, um, Luminaries is the long, the really long book that I think I'm just going to take it back and then just look for at the bookstore, whichever bookstore I come to. Um, but I also, the Blooded Sand, which is a Spartacus retelling, I have, that's the other one, the other books I got from the library. And the story life of AJ Fickery. That's the other one I got from the library, but I haven't read those yet. So I'm focusing on the ones I just showed you. Okay, so I'm also currently reading. I started reading this. Um, Theft of Swords. This was a recommendation by Reagan from Peru's Project. Not a direct one. Like she didn't directly comment to me or anything. But she talks about this book and how much she enjoys it, and I decided to check it out. And so far, I'm liking it. I, the other book that I got from her that, um, the book I heard about from her, um, I think it was her that said she really liked it. That one I ended up not liking, but in this, that's, um, and I don't know if it's because I waited too long to start it and I lost interest, or I just didn't, I just couldn't get into it. So I was, I was definitely worried that that would happen with this one. But so far, I'm really liking it. It's like these two guys, these two um, mercenaries, and they have been. They tend to do things for whatever you know for people. They will collect. They will get things for people. You know, and they won't ask questions. They'll just go through. The tr they'll go through the trouble of doing it, and they are. Their latest job is to steal a sword from a king. So, but what ends up happening is when they get there, they find that that king is dead in his room. And the prince and his guards, the guards and the prince find out, find them in his room and they think he is the one, they are the ones that killed his, killed the king. So they get arrested and his sister, knowing that they weren't responsible for it, makes them a deal. She says that um, she knows they were set up and she says that you must take my brother fearing for I am in fear of my brother's life so you must take him to this place and someone will tell him the truth about what's going on. So they kidnap the, the, the new king and that's as far as I have gotten right now. They are traveling and the, the king, the new king has revealed King Alric has revealed to them that his sister probably his sister Arista was probably scamming them basically and that it was all it was all set up and she's just gonna arrange for them to be killed once they've taken the prince away. So this is a very I'm so far really like this. this is really fun. I'm definitely glad to be reading more I'm like glad to be getting more into these adult fantasies, these thicker books because they are really fun it's just a lot to read <laughs> and fantasy as long as it's exciting the whole way most of the way through then I will stick with it there are some books that are more slow and steady that aren't as exciting okay so I'm also oh and that was one of these are the some of the books I took with me to Virginia to visit my sister I also am continuing the well of ascension it's hard to talk about this particular book because it's the second book and I don't know how many people read The Final Empire, but this is the second book in the Mistborn series, 
and it's basically, and like I, as I said in previous videos, it's about the aftermath of what happens at the end of book one, The Final Empire, and how they are dealing with things. And I'm almost on part one, part two, I think part two or three. Yep, I think so. Yep, I'm not part two, part three. I'm almost to part three. And then the stakes are getting higher. So much is going on. There's three armies attacking. And it's an Arden character, Vin, is, you know, she's really struggling. And so is her, you know, so is her boyfriend, Elon. And it's just, as usual, this is a really great, I'm really enjoying this series. And the, um, I'm also re finally getting onto The Lies of Lock Lamora, the first book in the Gentleman Baxter series. I did, I was gonna wait until I'm the little tail belongs to Rascal. Um, I was gonna wait until the summer, but I have procrastinated this book long enough. And I have also been bringing, yes, starting yesterday, I decided to bring this one to work and do well extension, a little break, and not be put in my lunch, stuffed in my lunchbox. Um, the problem is it's very hard to remain at work because I only have 50 minutes. I'm not, since I'm only a part-time employee, I don't get a lunch break. Or at least I don't work, you know, eight hours or six and a half hours. So, um. I only, you know, you because of that, I only get the 15 minute break to just relax a little bit and eat a snack. Um, so I don't have a lot of time, and then sometimes people in the break room will turn on the TV, or there will be other people in there talking, you know. So I don't get a lot of time to read, but that's why my progress in this book is particularly, one of the reasons why this, the progress in this book is particularly slow. Um... We've been introduced to Locke, and he has become, we've been introduced to the world of thieves in this world. And I guess this world is kind of inspired by Italy, by the looks of it. But I can't really say much on this book, because, I, again, I haven't gotten very far in it. We just met Locke. He's, you know, he's... So, next! Now... Out of the horror books I started to read, I got back into reading The Shining by Stephen King. I am on part three. They've just... But this is about... If you have not seen read this book or seen the Stanley Kubrick movie or the, the sci-fi miniseries, because I think Stephen King, because he didn't like the Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick movie, he eventually did a miniseries that he wrote, he wrote the screenplay for. Um... This family inherits this, I think it's in Maine. I mean, most of his stories are take place in Maine. This famous hotel called the Overlook Hotel. They are going to be the caretakers for this hotel during the winter season, during the off season. And you have this husband and wife who are having a very rocky marriage. And they have a little son who's like five years old. And he has this special gift. He can see things, supernatural things. Which is as the which is referred to the shining has the title. And this hotel is they are warned this hotel is haunted by one of the um, one of the employees that works at the hotel. And our little boy is warned but not to not to be scared and um, and from what I know, because I mean most people have heard of this one. That eventually are the the husband slash father Jack, and eventually starts to go crazy in the hotel. And there is actually a sequel to this. Um, this book called Doctor Sleep about the little boy in the story and him when what happens when he grows up. It's just really creepy, and it really looks at the idea of isolation and how creepy that can be, how scary that can be. And what I like about Stephen King is you don't need just the, even though it takes a long time, I like how you get more details about the characters. You learn about their lives and what brought them to this, 
to where they are in the, in the beginning of the, the plot. It's very interesting. It just takes a long time to read his books. But you really get an insight into the characters. And he also writes a lot of short chapters. And his chapters can, some of his chapters in his books can be short too, which makes it a quicker read. So I mean, that's the one, one of the horror books I'm reading. Another one of the horror books I'm reading. So I won't tell you about these books over here that I have off to the side because they'll take too long because this video is already pretty long. But I've also started getting back into reading this one, Malice. The first book in the, the Faithful and the Fallen series by John Gwynn. Gwynn, I think that's how you say it. Um... So for I'm also really liking this book too. And let's see if I can sum it up for you guys without sounding without. But so far, this is basically about there are several main characters. This is which is what I like. I like multi-character books. The problem is sometimes these kind of books are hard to sum for me to sum up. But there's basically something going on, like a war is looming, I think. And one of the kings has decided, you know, has gathered all the other kings, like some magical entity, like the the giants. And I'm sorry, I'm so bad at summarizing. Um, okay, so it's like the something the giants are um are stirring once again. But that also, but, um, and there's these other things like stones weeping blood, there's signs of giant worms, but these are all signs for some, a greater threat that is looming, and a war, and war is coming. And one of the kings has decided that, you know, they need to work together, but some of the kings aren't so keen, the kings of each land aren't so keen to, they don't, they're not sure if they believe what's going on. That's the, the main plot. You have Corbin who wants to be a warrior under his king. He's, you know, a teenage boy. You have Evanes. He sacrificed a lot, including his wife and son. Although I think as of right now, the son is still alive. Um, but he wants power to rule. And it's going to be, I'm looking, I'm kind of paraphrasing the little, the brief little summary snippets, snippets. And soon it will be in his grasp. Um, you have Veratus. I don't know if I'm, that's a problem with fantasy, is I can understand why some people will be turned off by fantasy. This is, there's really, there are a lot of confusing names and you got to figure out how to pronounce them. Some of one of the many reasons I don't know. Veranus, he wants, he has joined the ranks of the warband of High Prince Nathair. And I think Nathair is the son of the king who wants to, like, who has gathered all the other kings together to, because of this threat. He's a skilled swordsman, um, but he's always under the shadow of his older brother, which I kind of have that feeling to, to an extent. Not with a brother, but with a sister. And then you have the, the, the Thayer, like I said, he's a prince. He doesn't like what his, he doesn't agree with his father on some of the things he does in the way he thinks. And he kind of wants to, um, and I think he wants to be king. So, sorry, I'm just really, I have a hard time. I need to practice summarizing these kind of books. And I also, I'm really, I'm really enjoying that one. And it's, it's just really fun. The chapters are quick and easy. Um, I like, so far I like all the characters. Right now I'm not liking Evanus. He's kind of, but I can sympathize with him and I can understand his thoughts and feelings in the current situation in the book. But I also, like, I'm glad that the queen 
didn't, like, was giving the Corbin another chance. Because Corbin does something that Evanus doesn't approve of. He doesn't agree with. But he's not, he's not the one in charge. So it was the Queen's decision. And then, now I'm reading, this is another sci-fi book I've started. Because I've already started reading Illuminae and Defy the Stars. So I started also started reading Leviathan, Leviathan Wakes, which is a ser which is the another book in a series, the first book in a series. Again, another book that would be hard for me to sum up. Um, but it's good. I'm, you know, I'm really I'm enjoying this one as well. I definitely want to read more sci-fi, but I've always been apprehensive about sci-fi because I'm worried that I wouldn't understand because I am not a science person. But I am giving it a try and I am liking this book and I'm also liking Defy the Stars and Alone Day is debatable. I mean, it's interesting. But I'm just not used to the to the kind of writing that it, that it has. It's hard for me to figure out what's going on sometimes, even more than this. And, you know, there's a lot more to read, I feel like, you know, because there's parts of it where it has, like, there, it's, it's kind of complicated, hard for me to explain. And right now, like I said, I'm just really tired, but I wanted to do this video. So, anyway, that is my current reading, not including the books I have piled here right now, but I don't want to make this video too long, but I do have a pile of Victorian in literature and some more creepy, whimsical reads, and then I also have Crooked Kingdom here, which is neither whimsical nor creepy, it's just a typical, it's, but the whole raven thing on the cover kind of make, makes me feel more October-y with it, so I need to read that one, but who knows, I might not get into that one until, you know, November or December. But anyway, so I'm going to stop right here because this video is too long and I'm already concerned that this, I won't be able to up upload this video. So if you, were, if you weren't too bored and were interested in what I had to say and maybe if you are reading some of the books I'm reading, you know, not only feel free to share in the comments if that's the case, but also feel free to give my video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it if you did so and or subscribe to my channel if you like the video and have not already subscribed and I hope as always you are enjoying your reading and like I said if you are reading any of these books or whatever else you're reading feel free to share it at the bottom in the comment section below and if you're participating if you're reading any Halloween-esque books or, or if you're participating in Victober feel free to share that as well and I will talk to you all later all right bye